can't believe 10 weeks has already gone by. It's already been 10 weeks and we have some exciting news because in today's video, we're getting the tank wet for the first time. Thank you to Coral Vault for sponsoring a $150 giveaway later in this video. So be sure to stick around till the end for your chance to enter. Hey everybody, Matthew here from My First Fish Tank in a collaboration with Marine Depot. Coming at you with double digis today. Video 10 in the beginner how-to guide for saltwater aquariums and reef tanks. We got four tasks we need to cover today. Number one, what to do when your gear arrives, then choosing the right location for your tank, how to leak test your tank, and I forgot the last one, <laughs> how to level your tank. Let's try it again. What to do when your gear arrives, choosing the right location for your tank, how to leak test your tank, and how to level your tank. If you're just joining us for the first time and you haven't watched episodes one through nine, I'll put a link to the entire playlist up here and in the description below. If you're like me and you want to read the step-by-step -step instructions about everything we're gonna cover in this video, go to myfirstfishtank.com, click start here and scroll to the bottom, click on week 10, or just click blog down below. I know that if I don't mention this, somebody's gonna leave a comment down below, but I was going to be using the JBJ 45 gallon, but it's back ordered and I'm not gonna get it till the end of April. So I'm gonna use both the APS stand and the Innovative Marine Nuvo Encore just to show you guys how to leak test and level the tank today. Let's get to it. Obviously, the first thing you want to do when all of your gear arrives is just make sure everything's there. So get out the packing list and just check everything off. I've ordered from Marine Depot 50 times by this point and they've never missed a single item. So I'm guessing it's all going to be there, but double check just to make sure. The second thing you really need to do is you need to check the tank. It is by far the most fragile piece of equipment out of every single thing. So gently open the package and inspect the glass for cracks and the edges for chips. And the last thing you're going to need to do if you go with the APS stand is put the stand together. But if you go with the JBJ 45 gallon system, it actually is delivered by freight and it comes with a stand pre-made, which is an added bonus. It's really important that you choose the right location from the outset because once that tank is full of water, it is dang near impossible to move without draining it and causing a huge hassle. I've moved so many tanks in my life and it's such a pain. So be sure you choose the right place the first time. Well, how do you know it's the right place? Let's talk about the five criteria we generally use to decide where to put our saltwater aquariums. The first has to do with windows. Windows cause two things. Number one, they cause direct sunlight, which can lead to algae growth. And if you live in an older house and maybe you have a really cold winter or a really hot summer and your windows aren't insulated, maybe they're single pane, you can also get a lot of chill and a lot of heat radiating from that window which can cause temperature variations in your tank. And in your tank, you want stability. Take for example, my 14 gallon peninsula tank. It gets about an hour of sunlight just in the morning. And that doesn't seem to cause any sort of algae issues. But if you have a large bay window that face south and you live in the northern hemisphere, you might not want to put it right next to that because it might get too much light that's out of your control and cause a lot of unwanted algae growth. The second thing to consider are outlets. Really just two points to consider here. Number one is how close is your tank to an outlet? It's really annoying to have an absolutely gorgeous tank and then have wires running down the wall. So make sure you're placing it near an outlet. And the other thing to consider is amperage. Both the 20 gallon and the 45 gallon tank, they're relatively small and they're not gonna require a lot of amperage but your heater and your return pump and maybe even your lights will draw a little bit of amp. So you just wanna make sure that that one outlet isn't overloaded. For example, if you have your refrigerator and your microwave and you plug in a vacuum and you run your tanks, that could cause a problem. So if you have old wiring or live in an old craftsman style house, you might need to call an electrician just to make sure you can get adequate service at that outlet. The third thing to consider is HVAC or floorboard heaters. Really, I've never had an issue with central heating. I mean, you might wanna consider not placing your tank directly in the flow of your heating vents. It could cause a lot of temperature variations. Also, I probably wouldn't put your tank right up against a floorboard heater because all of that radiant heat is definitely gonna spike your tank's temperature in the winter. The fourth consideration is noise. Usually I edit out the background noise, but I'm gonna be silent for a second so you can hear the noise. So here we go. I 
I don't even hear it anymore to be honest. It's just background noise, but your pumps will make vibration noises and you will hear some water overflowing your weir into the rear filtration chamber. If you're a sensitive sleeper, then you might want to consider putting this somewhere that's not your bedroom. But if a low buzzing or water cascading sound doesn't bother you, then you can really put it anywhere you want. And the fifth thing to consider is how close is a utility room or sink? Now, that's not an essential make it or break it thing, but I used to have tanks scattered all throughout the house and it was such a pain to have to lug five gallon buckets all over the place. So in an ideal world, you would put this next to a utility closet or a sink to make your water changes and your weekly maintenance a lot easier and a lot faster. I would say any season pro leak tests every one of their new tanks because accidents do happen during shipping. And the thing you don't want to happen is to fill up your tank to fill it with livestock and then and only then to notice that there's a leak because then you have to break everything down and either fix the leak or either get a replacement. So do yourself a favor and do a leak test first even though it's a little bit annoying. To start out with, the first thing you wanna do with a leak test is use a wet rag and wipe down the top of the stand and also the bottom of the tank. Just make sure there's no debris there or anything that might cause stress on the glass. Then go ahead and place the tank on the stand. You could do the leak test on the kitchen counter right next to the sink, but if you go that route, you're going to have to drain it after the leak test, move the tank over to the stand, and then fill it up again a second time to do the leveling. So it might be easier and save you time in the long run just to combine the leak test and the leveling with the tank on top of its stand. You don't need fancy water for this. You can just use tap water and fill the tank to within about an inch of the top, both in the display and in the rear filtration chamber. Then using a dry towel, dry all around the tank and around the base of the tank so that there's no moisture on the outside of the tank. Wait a bit, maybe 30 minutes or so, and then both visually inspect and run your finger along every seam. If there's no moisture, then you're good to go. But if you do find moisture, grab that dry towel again, wipe the tank down again, and wait another 30 minutes. It could have just been a one-off and it actually wasn't leaking, or you could have a problem. If at any time you discover there is a leak in the tank, go ahead and drain it, call Marine Depot or wherever you bought the tank from to ask advice about how to proceed. All right, you made it this far. You deserve to know about the Coral Vault giveaway. The prize is a $150 gift card to Coral Vault. If you haven't checked them out, go to coral-vault.com. You can use this gift card on anything. They're what you see is what you get imported corals. They're aquaculture products, their artwork, their dry goods, whatever you want. It's only available to the lower 48, although if you are in Alaska or Canada, you can still win it, but Coral Vault will not be able to ship to you. You have to be 18 years or older, one entry per household, and it runs for exactly one week. We're gonna close the entries April 9th at 8.59 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, right when the next week's video drops. How to enter, it couldn't be any easier. You gotta do two things. One, you gotta subscribe to My First Fish Tank YouTube, just hit that subscribe button. And number two, leave a comment, hashtag Coral Vault. That's it, hashtag Coral Vault and you're entered. The winner's going to be announced in the Friday, April 16th video and I will leave a comment responding to whoever wins. But if I go to your YouTube channel and you don't have any contact information, I have no way of getting hold of you. So be sure you tune back in for that April 16th video and send me an email, contact at myfirstfishtank.com so we can get you that gift card. Good luck everybody and a big thanks to Coral Vault for sponsoring the giveaway. Leveling your tank is actually really, really important because if a tank is not level, over time, what's going to happen is that water is going to put extra pressure on one side of the tank or another and for most of these modern day rimless tanks the only thing keeping these tanks together is a thin seam of silicone so any additional pressure could lead to catastrophe so we need to make sure that we level our tanks really well to start just grab a wet rag and if you haven't already done it go ahead and wipe down and clean both the top of the stand and the bottom of the tank then next up is place the tank on the stand if it's not already there from the leak test something to note before we go any further a tank is going to settle in especially if you're placing it on carpet so you want to make sure you do your final leveling only when the tank is completely filled with water start by filling the tank halfway with tap water or if you still have the tap water in there from the leak test you could just leave it 
Sometimes if it's all the way full, it can be a little heavy and difficult to get the shims under. So if you need to drain half the water from the tank, do that now. Starting at the front of the tank, place the level from left to right and measure the front, the middle, and the back to get a sense of which direction needs leveling. Grab one, two, or three composite shims. I picked up these from Lowe's, I think, but you can pick them up on Amazon. It's like two bucks a pack. With the ribbed side facing down, use a hammer to gently tap the shim into place. If for some reason you can't quite fit the shim underneath there, you can always have a helper gently lift that side of the tank. But generally, if the tank is off balance, you should be able to slide a shim underneath. Really, really important here is never ever place a shim between the tank and the stand. We often talk about the fact that we're balancing or leveling the tank, but in reality, we're balancing the tank by balancing the stand. Once all the shims are in place and it's level from the left to right, then grab the level again, place it from front to back starting on the left side and measure the left side, the middle side, and the right side. Then just repeat the process using additional shims to either put them in the front or in the rear to make it completely level. Once everything's totally level, I like to do one final check and I also like to use the level at a diagonal to make sure it's completely level from every angle. One really annoying thing I had to learn the hard way here is if you're adding an additional shim onto a corner next to another shim, be careful because when you hammer in that second shim, it may dislodge the first shim and you'll have to start over again. Sometimes if your floor is really uneven, the thickness of one shim isn't gonna be enough, so you'll need to double up the shims. That's not a problem. Just put two together and make sure they're both rib side facing down. But sometimes you need two shims, but you can't quite fit two shims under. The thickness of the thin end is a little bit too much starting out. What I like to do at that point is just Gently tap in the first shim, then grab the second shim, place it underneath the first shim, and that should give you enough leverage to tap that one into place. If you haven't already done so, fill up the tank now all the way with water. You can see why we recommend starting this out with the tank only halfway full. It gives the tank enough weight to settle down, but it also allows a helper to gently lift the stand if you're having problems getting the shim underneath. With the tank totally full of tap water, remeasure from front to back, from left to right, and the diagonals just to make sure there aren't any adjustments. If it's on carpet, you will probably have to make some shim adjustments but that's easily done with a hammer. This may sound a little counterintuitive at this point, but I would gently grab the stand and give it a very gentle shake. And the reason I'm doing this, because if this is your first time, you may have actually balanced the stand on a shim. So if you gently rock it, it will be very much so off balance. Breaking a shim is really easy. All you have to do is grab the shim and pull up and it should snap, as simple as that. Sometimes it's really difficult to get your fingers underneath that shim. What I like to do is use some sort of spatula or putty knife, slide it under and then lift it up together. That usually does the trick for me. Then all you gotta do is drain the tank and you're done. If there's still some water in there, just grab a dry towel to sop it up. But one note of caution here, now that the water is out of your tank, it's way lighter than it was. So be careful not to bump into it because you could knock it off the shims and then you have to do the whole process over again. Something people will often ask is what if it's just a tiny bit off? If it's literally barely touching the line, it's probably not a make or break situation, especially on these smaller tanks. To be honest, I usually don't even level my 10 gallon tanks. The more level you can make it, the more stability and security you're going to have long run. If you haven't done already, be sure to enter the Coral Vault giveaway. Remember, just subscribe to my first fish tank and leave a comment below, hashtag Coral Vault. And if you're like me and you want those step-by-step -step written instructions, my blogger Max has already written them, done a great job. All you got to do is click on blog below and you can read along the step-by-step -step instructions with the video. And be sure to tune in next week because we're going to save you a ton of time, a ton of money, and a ton of energy by sharing with you the most common beginner mistakes so you don't make them. As always, happy reefing everybody. Thanks for watching. Be well. We'll see you next time.